Okay, so now we're going to um, step number three here. Step number three, we're looking at the addition of 20 mils of 0.5 molar NaOH. So whenever you don't, like, we don't know where we are in this titration. Whenever you don't know where, where you are, you should calculate the moles of the acid and the moles of the base, and that'll tell you. Because if you have more acid, then you have increased the equivalence point yet. If you have more base, uh, then you're beyond the equivalence point. Uh, if they're equal, then you're at the equivalence point. So let's start here. So it's at point number three, uh, what do we have here? So step three, or in your notes it might say C. We have 20 moles of uh, 0.5 molar NaOH. So our moles of acid haven't changed because we're looking at the initial moles of acid. Uh, we had initially told us, told us we had 20 moles of 0.5 molar. We already calculated that in step two. So moles of acid are 0 0.01 moles of acid. Sure. Moles of base, that's going to change at every step because we're changing the volume of the base. We're adding more at each step. So the molar, initial molar concentration, that doesn't change. That was 0.5, right? 0.5 molar. And now in step three, we're adding 20 mils. So 20 mils is 0 0.020 liters. All right, and so when we work that out, we end up with 0 0.010 moles of base. So what do you notice about the moles of the acid and the moles of the base? Looks like they're the same. So what's this point called? This is called the equivalence point. And at the equivalence point for strong acid, oh, let's come up here well, for strong acid, strong base, uh, the pH is going to be 7. pH is equal to 7. You don't even have to show any calculations. The idea is that they totally um, neutralize each other, and so you have a neutral solution. All of the moles of the acid neutralize all the moles of the base. You end up with salt and water, you end up with sodium chloride and water, and what we learned at the end of chapter 16 was that sodium chloride comes from a strong acid, strong base, and so it's a neutral salt, so it doesn't change the pH at all. Alright, so now we can go on to, to step four. Now, since we've already neutralized all of the base at, at 20 mils, it took 20 mils of base to, to neutralize all the acid, any base that we add after that is going to be excess. So we just need to figure out in step four how much extra base do we have. This is the excess base section. Excess base. So I've already reached the equivalence point. Any base that I add after here is, is just going to be extra. So again, you find your moles of your acid, which we found in part A, or part, sorry, the second part. 0.010 moles, and now we want to find the moles of B, the moles of base, for this one. So if we started off with 0.5 molar, and the volume that we're adding now, if we look back up there, is 20.2 uh, milliliters. So 20.2 milliliters is 0.0202 liters. All right, when you multiply that out, moles of base. So you can see you have more moles of base than you do for the acid. The reaction that you have going on here is still the same. It's still you know, HCl uh, plus NaOH giving you NaCl and water. And you don't really care about your products because they're both neutral. Here you started off with 0 0.01 moles here and you have 0 0.0101 here. You're going to subtract out all of the acid you want to figure out how much extra base do you have. Not a lot, right? You have 0 0.00301 moles of base. So that's your sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Uh, so what we want to do now is find the molar concentration of that base. We need to take this molar concentration divided by the total volume. So how do I find the total volume? find our total volume here. Total volume, I used um, 20 mils of the acid, that's 20, right, 020 liters of the acid, and then for the base I had 0 0.0202 this time. Um, so that gives me a total volume of 0 0.04020 liters. So I'm going to try to find the hydroxide ion concentration this time, which is equal to the sodium hydroxide concentration. I'm just going to take those moles, 0 0.0001, and divide it by 
zero point zero four zero two zero. These are my moles over my liters. You can work that out. And you should get point zero zero two four nine. You can also use scientific notation if you want to. Point zero zero two four nine molar. And that's the molar concentration of the hydroxide ion. So if we're trying to find the pH, first we're going to have to find a pOH. So we're going to do negative log of that number to find our pOH. And then we will find our a 14 minus that will give us our pH. So let's find our pOH. pOH is just negative log of 0 0.00249. So we work that up. We got 2.60. Uh, and then if you find pH, you want to do 14 minus that. We do 14 minus 2.60. So we get there. 11.40. So it's definitely basic, right? That's definitely a basic pH. Very cool. The very last thing that you can do if you want to is make your titration curve and you just plot that pH versus volume. Our initial um, pH was like what, 0.3 and then it went up after 10 mils, right after 10 mils below. So at 0 mils it was 0.3 and then it went up to 0.7 and then at 20 mils here, this is 20 mils, it went up to pH of 7 and then just a little tiny bit and it went all the way up here. So if you were to just kind of sketch that out, it's going to start off slow going to jump really high and it's going to kind of flatten out. That's the, the shape of the, the titration curve every single time.